where the irresistible force, the vibrational change, is coming face to face with what thinks it's the immovable object, the control system, but it ain't. And we're starting to look each other in the eye. And we're going to see more and more of this. The control system's going to come under more and more challenge and more and more pressure and more and more questioning as we move through this period. As the, the, the new energy, the new information epoch becomes more and more impacting upon human society, human perception and the world in which we live. There is a change in the ocean of energy that we are living in and decoding. It's, it's, it's a new flow and it's getting faster. And we have a choice here um, of getting on the, in the canoe or the airbed and lying back and, and enjoying the adventure, where it's going to go, how the world's going to change, how our perceptions are going to expand. Whoa, I never realized that. I've never uh, seen that before. Isn't that incredible? And, and all these things that are going to be happening, it's going to be an amazing world we're moving into. Or we can try to, to hold the status quo at a time when the energy status quo is changing, and the information status quo is changing. And if we do that, then we're going to be using more and more energy just to stand still and hold on to, to, to life as we think it should be. And eventually, the flow is going to get so symbolically quick and fast, and people call it the quickening, it's the quickening of the vibration, that it's going to do this to the control system, wash it away. And we're going we're gonna to start, as, as we're affected by it, more and more people, it's happening to them now, never mind going to. We're going to be um, becoming aware of many other levels of ourselves, many other levels of reality, where we can um, access insight and inspiration um, and intuitive knowing. And the world in our heads is changing as a result of that, those of us who are, or those people that are waking up. The control system, the Illuminati, loves to use this phrase for their new order, a new dawn. Well, there is a new dawn, but it's not what they think it is. It's a new dawn of human awareness, a new dawn of human consciousness. We have gone through this process where we once were connected um, to our wider awareness. We've seen this control system move in, and now we're going to see the reverse as we awaken and return to the true nature of the human being as we move further into what we call the future a human being that today's human being would not even begin to recognize that's not possible to do that that's impossible it's matter of fact when you expand your consciousness from the uh, five sense body mind level and this uh, control system is being dismantled vibrationally through information it is going. And we're now in this wonderful period where humanity is standing up more and more and stretching itself and breaking the chains that have held us in servitude all this time. It's a wonderful, wonderful time to be alive and to to to. to experience this change that's coming and the challenges that are coming in the in the in the shorter term big time is the control system is like a cornered rat and it's going to throw everything at us uh, to try to um, hold on to its power as einstein said you cannot solve problems with the same level of consciousness that created them and through this this epoch of suppression that we've been through and control We've had a level of consciousness that has created problems and then some other people have come in with the same level of consciousness called a new, another political party or another religion or whatever. Same level of consciousness, different name, and they've not solved the problems, they've made them bloody worse. Why? Because it's the same level of consciousness. And, and we're now at the point where a new level of consciousness is emerging, a new awareness. So instead of saying it's, it's impossible, they're, they're impossible problems to solve. No, they're not. Most of them are manufactured problems and the rest are caused by ignorance of reality and self. As we move into this expanded state of awareness, what we call impossible problems to overcome will be gone. And it's not... 
It's not that we have to uh, uh, um, find enlightenment. We're already enlightened. We're already all that is, has been, and ever can be. What we've done is allow barriers of belief system and preconceived ideas to keep us vibrationally from connecting with that infinity that we already are. And that means breaking the spell. Breaking the spell on the human psyche, because that's what it is, a spell that's been cast upon the human psyche to keep us in an hypnotic trance so we forget the true genius magnificence of who we are. And these are the people, most of them unknowingly, who have cast the spell as middlemen and women for that which is truly casting the spell in the background. The programming of our perception. So the first step of freedom is to disconnect ourselves from the perception manipulation that we've been undergone. To disconnect ourselves from this matrix of control and fundamentally to disconnect ourselves from the massive influence that the reptilian brain has on human behavior, perception and reality. What is the, what is the, 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 the basis of the reptilian brain? It's survival. It's based on fear. We need to be, when we're in states of fear, we go into a survival response reptilian brain. It gives us insecurity because the reptilian brain's always insecure because it's always looking around, what's the next danger? So when we go into the reptilian brain level of, of perception or uh, reality reading, then we go into states of insecurity because that's what the reptilian brain is and anxiety too, this anxiety that people have. And you can, you, you, can, you, you can feel anxiety and not have any idea. Why am I feeling anxiety? My life's going fine. I'm, but why do I feel anxious? Because this is talking to us all the time. And the, and the reptilian brain is always anxious. For the, again, it's always looking. There's always a problem to find. Always a danger to find. That's, that's its whole mechanism, its whole system. And therefore, when we go into the reptilian brain state of reality, we are going into big time into the control system's collective mind that is there to turn their mind into our mind. And so, overriding the reptilian brain. The reptilian brain does not think. It does not work things out, it reacts. That's what it does. So when we fall into behavior responses where we're reacting to situations, not deep breath, think it through let's have a look at this calmly that disconnects us from the reptilian brain and its impact and its impact on our behavior and response so one of the you know we have this this phrase you know uh, if you when you get angry count to 10 well let's try 20 that might be better but if and, and you you, always, you keep getting caught because that's our natural response mechanism but the more you work this through I know from experience you take a deep breath, when you're faced with a situation where you'd normally go, bang, reaction, survival. You can't say that about me. Oh my God, what's going on? Oh my God, global warming. Oh my God. What about the economy? And oh my God. You go, okay, I'm looking at this calmly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna think this through and then I'm gonna make a calm decision on how I respond to this. Now, other parts of the brain and the mind are impacting upon our behavior. We're no longer controlled from this thing, which, which I mean, th 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 this, this is panic. This is the genetic version of panic, the reptilian brain. So the more we could calmly think things through, not react, not re react with emotional immediate responses, we're disconnecting from that um, impact on our behavior of that reptilian brain, which is the microchip through which the collective mind of the control system speaks to us and creates a, uh, this uh, moonopoly, as uh, Neil Haig calls it, which is this society that goes round and round and round and round as we react and respond in incredibly predictable ways. It's amazing, you know, how you can go anywhere in the world under so many different cultures and backgrounds, and yet you have a situation, it might be in a bar, in the street or wherever, and the number of times you see people 
react in exactly the same way. And if you type data into a computer and then press enter, you know how it's going to react because you've programmed it to react like that. And every computer is going to react the same because the same data is going in. And enter is the reaction. And because we've fallen so much into the computer, body computer level of perception, we do the same. A situation emerges in this country or that country, and bingo, the reaction is the same. Why? Because consciousness is not involved, it's data in, situation, computer reacts, press enter, and that's why human responses are so predictable. When you open to consciousness, you become unpredictable. Because you're entering the realm of all possibility. And all possibility is not predictable. It sees things in different ways. And it expresses uniqueness and celebrates uniqueness. And it moves out of the computer level of reaction and response. Belief and preconceived idea is just like a computer program. Because it reacts the same and it edits reality. This is why you can talk to someone with a preconceived idea or a really strong belief and they literally don't hear what you say. I, I've seen um, um, television programs where what they did is they got a man and a woman who'd been having like relationship problems and they both had big time preconceived ideas about each other. In other words, programmed uh, perceptions. What they did then was get them to talk to each other while they filmed it and then they took him away and they asked both of them what did the other one say and in what tone did they say it they then played the original chat back to both of them and they were shocked to see that how they received what the other one said and how they said it was often nothing like had actually been said how many times do we say to people I never said that you did why preconceived idea of the person is editing the information being received to fit the preconceived idea. And we're doing this all the time. So another part of freeing ourselves um, is to free ourselves from belief. And not free flowing, okay, I'm looking at this, this is what I feel at the time, but I'm open that it's something else in the light of new information. Instead of belief, rigid belief, I'm going to edit my reality to fit the belief. Where they want us to believe. Because when we believe, we are in a box. They want believers. They don't care if you believe fanatically in Islam or Judaism or Christianity or Barack bloody Obama. As long as you believe rigidly in something, then you have immediately reduced your ability to um, expand consciousness and read reality in an expanded way. Religion is mind. That's what it is. You see, once you have, I, I have this saying that I, that, that I have, if you can tell me what you believe, you are in a prison. Because beliefs, when you give them names, take on identities. So, um, what are you? I'm a Christian. Okay, that means you must believe this or you're not a Christian. I'm a, I'm a Muslim. That means you must believe this or you're not a Muslim. So once you say, here's the name of what I believe, the wall starts appearing, the rules and regulations appear, and people say, you can't say that or you're not a Christian, you're not a Muslim. And again, the box is formed. Everything just is. We all just are. This is infinite possibility we're experiencing. And once you start to go into these systems of belief, then we're disconnecting from that and we become fragments of mind. This, these are people in a hypnotist stage show who have been hypnotized, even though they're not, to believe that they are evangelical Christians. Right? It's a mind game. You can make people do this. And they will read reality like that. 
and therefore not be all possibility. Worship. I am all that is, has been and ever can be. And, I, and I'm worshipping? And I'm looking up to something as if it's bigger and better than me? We are all the same one consciousness. And that one consciousness needs to look itself in the eye, not up there. We can respect people, fine. But giving our power away to them, worshipping them? Once we, we go into that mode, we're saying, I'm little me and they're up there. We're all one infinite consciousness, bar none. And these prisons, these are prisons of the mind, prisons of consciousness that keep us from consciousness. We call them religion, politics, race, the biggest one, self-identity, that hold us in servitude to little me, to limitation. I, I, um, I identify with my race. Why? It's a vehicle for your consciousness to experience this reality. What are you, what are you identifying with being black, white or sky blue pink for? It's just a vehicle. And it's all limitation. And when we see life through the tunnel vision of preconceived idea and rigid belief, we're never going to A, express our true magnificence, and B, we're never going to understand what the hell we're part of and what we're doing here. Because scientific experiments have shown that when you have a rigid belief system, whatever it is, the neurons in the brain fire off in a certain pattern. And in doing so, they are reading reality to fit the belief. And therefore, if we um, th think in any belief system or perception system in the terms of limitation and little me, then what we create is the prison walls that put us in positions where we live lives of little me. Not because we are, because we believe we are. What can I do? I'm just little me. Well, there, well, that's it then. What are you going to do with your life? Nothing. Why? Because you don't believe that that's possible. I am infinite consciousness, all that has been, ever will be. Now I can, cut, I can, I can start to, to come from that level instead of little me. And I can do things that a little me mentality would never do. Not because I'm better than little me, but because I don't believe I'm little me. And this one does. So if we open our minds, open our minds and let the demons out. The demons of programming, I mean, out. And get this blank sheet of paper going. I am not going to read reality on what I've thought up to now, I'm gonna let the information be my guide. And if it is at odds with my religious belief system, my political belief system, or my cultural belief system, then I'm, that's fine, but I'm gonna go with information. And when we do that, it makes such a fantastic difference in our lives and what we can do and what we can, what we can achieve and make happen. Because if we are at our core, as we are, the real us, all possibility, then if we don't express that, then we're already withdrawing from what we are, all possibility, and we're living a few possibilities, very few in terms of many people. And it's the time to choose between whether we're going to be dominated by the head, particularly the left brain, its perception of reality, limitation, structure, everything apart from everything else. You can't do this. That's not possible. That's impossible. Or we're going to open the heart vortex that connects us with the intuitive uh, knowing of the infinite consciousness. Open the right brain and let its ability to see things connected to impact on our understanding of reality and who we are and it, the, the, the process was described very well in the matrix movie the first one the first thing is to realize the situation that we're in it is what it is you are a slave neo get out of the denial of this pseudo freedom that we think we have and then having realized the situation we're in to choose freedom over continued slavery, whether it be 
blatant slavery or subtle slavery. And when we make that choice to be free, and we're prepared to go with what life then brings us as a result of that decision, then a transformation starts. And it can, I mean, in my case, my transformation happened on national television. Um, and I, I, I went through this period where they, it was widely believed that I was completely crazy, insane and all that stuff. You've ruined and finished your life, they said. You'll never go anywhere now. Right, okay, we'll see about that, shall we? And the transformation is breaking down the energetic construct that we have created by our previous sense of self. Our state of being, our mental emotional state, our self sense of perception is being broadcast constantly as a vibrational pattern. And that vibrational pattern is drawing to us um, energy fields that sync with what we're putting out. We call these energy fields people, places, ways of life, jobs, locations. And so we create a life experience based on what we're putting out and what we're drawing in through what I call vibrational magnetism. When we go through this transformation that I'm talking about, where we say, I can see the situation I'm in, I choose freedom, then there is a change, often dramatic, not always, a change in our vibrational broadcast state because we have changed our attitude, we have changed our sense of perception. And what happens then is what we were pulling in before changes because we're no longer sinking with that and what can happen in these transformational periods and there'll be people in this room will be going that happened to me that happened to me that did um, is people go out of your life because you're no longer connecting them vibrationally locations change jobs change what you do lifestyles change everything can change once you change because we are creating that reality by drawing it in and this is why the control system wants us to believe we are little me. I have no power. Because when we believe that, we are putting out a vibrational pattern that says, I'm little me, I have no power. What do we draw into our lives? Manifestations of little me and I have no power. So that's why they're trying to program us to believe in that because they know we'll then create it in the holographic reality. And when we... When we can go, we go through some of these transformations and we're breaking out of the whole patterns, it can be frustrating. There was a time in the early 90s where I was so frustrated, so almost crushed by what was happening to me, that I didn't want to upset anybody. So I found this hill in a place called Wiltshire in England, not far from uh, Stonehenge. And I walked up this hill, there's nobody, no houses behind. And when I got to the top, I screamed my bloody heart out just to get this frustration out of me. And I so I completely re relate to these pictures from the Matrix because I've been there. And once we start to awaken, we start to, as they say, know thyself. And stop relating with David Icke and Charlie Smith and all these names that we give to our experience and start to connect with the true magnitude of who we are. This is who we are. Everything from the beginning, my birth, my ancestors, my children, my wife, everything comes together simultaneously. I saw everything about me and about everyone who was around me. I saw everything they were thinking now, what they thought then, what was happening before, what was happening now. There is no time. There is no sequence of events. There's no such thing as limitation of distance, of period, of time, of place. I could be anywhere I wanted to be simultaneously. That is who we are and that is what the control system is desperate to stop us remembering. And when we know thyself and we realize that's who we are, our perception of our possibility just explodes. People say to me, why don't they kill you? Because they can't.
That's why they can't, and I'm not kidding. If they cannot enter my decoding system as being able to remove me, they cannot remove me. Because if I don't decode it, it cannot manifest holographically. And when, you know, I, years ago when I traveled America in the 90s, and I met loads and loads of whistleblowers and people that were putting information out, and they were, they were invariably, they were going, I don't know how long they'll let me do this before they kill me, and, and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, what are you talking about? You're going to create your own reality if you're not careful. All those people are either dead or have had their lives destroyed financially by the system. Why? Because they believed it was possible. Therefore, they decode it into holographic reality. Bingo, it's happened. We need to redefine ourselves, not from I can't, to, to the true magnitude of who we are, not just as a concept, but living it, bringing it into this reality. And then we'll see where the power is. And it's not with a few dark suits in some government department. It's here. That's where the power is. And as we redefine ourselves from little me, I'm just a human, to I am infinity having an experience as a human. No more little me, no more control system. One depends on the other for their existence. Instead of looking at the, in the mirror and saying, that's me, with all its limitations and oh my goodness me, I'm losing my hair and all that stuff. To seeing that that's a reflection of the vehicle through which we are experiencing this tiny frequency range we call the world. To stop looking in the mirror and identifying with that is who we are and realizing that that is who we are. What that near death experiencer describes is who we are. This is the choice. This is that fork on the road. At the start of the day, are we going to be consciousness or mind? Are we going to be all that is or little me? And if we choose all that is or anything like it, then the control system's over. Escaping the box. First of all, stop lying to ourselves. That's how we escape the box, one of them. There's this uh, thing that they call cognitive dissonance. And what that means is that you have a belief system and you come across an experience or information that puts a challenge on that belief system and you go into an un uneasy emotional state because there is a difference between your belief system and the information or experiences you're ha you've had and they call this uneasy state in psychology cognitive dissonance this is a good thing if this makes us go, hold on a second, in the light of this new information or this experience, I've got to look again at my belief system. That's fine. That's brilliant. That moves us on. What so many people do, not least the skeptics as they call them in science and stuff and religious fanatics, is when they come across this situation with cognitive dissonance, they have to find a way of explaining away that so this does not move. And at that, because of that, they don't move on. They find a way of explaining why, why that, that can be true and this can be true. They're lying to ourselves. So with our belief systems and the way we see the world, if we can be honest with ourselves and say, okay, I believe this up to this point, but in the light of new information, I'm gonna move my perception. That's when we start to move on and expand. And without being honest with ourselves and without hiding from the truth while claiming to try to find it and going into denial, change the subject, don't want to talk about it. You know, it's funny, and people in this room will relate to this. When you talk to someone who has a rigid belief system, maybe it's in your own family or whatever, and when you start to give them information that's putting their belief system under challenge, they get angry, some of them. They get wound up. Shut up! Shut up, don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear that nonsense. What they mean is, if I listen, this belief system's gonna be in danger, so shut up, because I don't want my belief system to change. This is what I mean by being honest with ourselves, to, to, to 
be open to all possibility instead of defending preconceived ideas that we've had in our life up to this point. It is what it is. And if we find new information and we think, well, I've been a Christian all my life and now I can see that, that, that there's more to know than that, or I've been a Muslim all my life, and this, then that's brilliant. Instead of saying, I have to defend my belief system because then I, because if I don't, I've got to admit to myself that I've been believing something I now know not to be true all these years, then, then, then we, we don't move on. But if we say, hey, this is fantastic. I can, I can see life in a different way now. That's wonderful. Instead of being embarrassed because um, we, we suddenly realize that we've, we've not seen the world as it really is up to this point. None of us have. We, None of us know what there is still to know.